Hello and good morning my dear children of class 9. So today we shall straight away begin with Act 2, Scene 8. So this scene deals with two minor characters namely Celerino and Selenio. These two are seen discussing about what, ha uh, what had been taking place in that uh, in uh, Venice, in and around Venice and these two characters Celerino and Selenio, although they are very minor characters, but yet they discuss about the development of the plot that does not take place, that is not shown on the stage. So in this way, they more or less act like the chorus of the play, you know, wherein they fill the gaps of the instances that uh, you know eventually gives us a clearer picture of what is happening out here in venice at the same at the same time when we discuss about what on the other hand at belmont has been happening and is taking place so and these two characters you know they always discuss about uh, the happenings the development of those plots that are not staged why because they want to show uh, show the uh, show um, their important role you know to the audience so that is why these two characters undoubtedly though minor but yet they play a very important role and in this scene we are uh, from this scene what we uh, become aware of is that Jessica and we hear the news of Jessica and uh, Lorenzo's elopement they have already eloped and the outburst of Shylock is also seen out here. So now let us begin with this scene, Act 2, Scene 8, which takes place in Venice, a street enter Celerino and Selenio. Now Celerino says, Why man, I saw Bassanio under sail with him is Graciano gone along and in their ship I'm sure Lorenzo is not. So they were discussing about, you know, so from then we get to know that Bassanio has already set sail for Belmont and with him Graciano too was seen, uh, seen Graciano who had accompanied him you know he too was seen in the ship uh, sailing towards Belmont but they discuss about they talk about Lorenzo too and they say and they uh, and they um, you know admit that you know definitely they had not seen Lorenzo out there you know although they had seen everybody except for Lorenzo. Then Selenio says, the villain, the, uh, the villain Jew without cries raised the Duke who sent, who's, who went with him to search Bassanio's ship. So now out here, why do you think the villain, who, uh, first and foremost, who is this villain Jew? Yes, it is referred to Shylock. And why do you think he raised huge outcries in front of the Duke? Why did he go out uh, crying and, uh, uh, you know, screaming and yelling and crying out in front of the Duke? Obviously, it is because he has heard the news. He now has received the news about the elopement of his daughter with a Christian that too who happened to be a friend of Antonio. So that from the uh, from these two minor characters conversation from Celerino and Selenio, we get uh, the news about what incidents had been have been taking place out there in Venice. First and foremost, we hear through them that Bassanio has already set sail with Graciano and Lorenzo was not seen. And the reason why they were discussing about Lorenzo was it seems that, you know, Lorenzo and Jessica had already eloped. Uh, and on hearing this news, you know, obviously Shylock was embittered. He was so embittered that he raised huge outcries, loud outcries and he rushed towards the Duke to seek for help. Then Celerino says, he came too late, the ship was under sail but it happened to be so that, you know, um, Shylock, he reached the harbour of the ship quite late. Why? Because Bassanio and his crew had already set sail for Belmont by the time the Duke, under the insistence of Shylock, had reached the harbour out there. So, but there the Duke was given to understand that in a gondola were seen together Lorenzo and his amorous Jessica. Besides, 
Antonio certified the Duke they were not in but they're not with Bassanio and his ship so you know they not only reached late out there you know the reason why uh, Shylock forced the Duke to accompany him and uh, to go towards the harbor was he wanted the ship of Bassanio to be searched for he doubted that you know behind his daughter's elopement with that Christian uh, Lorenzo it would definitely be the hand of his other Christian friend, uh, friends namely uh, Bassanio, Graciano and obviously Antonio. So but unfortunately after he reached out there he uh, he could not uh, you know he could not uh, make any search he could not search the ship for the ship had already sa uh, set sail and not just that they were also given further information that uh, by some people out there who had witnessed who had seen Lorenzo and Jessica and they uh, informed the Duke that Lorenzo and Jessica were actually seen uh, sailing in a gondola. Gondola is actually a Venetian long boat, you know. So they were seen sailing in a gondola to which direction he, that person did not know. But they were seen sailing somewhere to some direction. And besides, Antonio certified, Antonio also confirmed whatever uh, news that were given. Antonio confirmed it by, uh, uh, by saying that uh, there they were not with Bassanio in his ship. So he too informed Antonio to give uh, uh, the uh, he added uh, some more reliable information that uh, Jessica and Lorenzo they were not in uh, Bassanio's ship. Yes. Then Selenio. I never heard a passion so confused. Passion means a frenzy of anger. Obviously, he lost his daughter to a Christian. His daughter who was his only child. So, obviously, the uh, natural reaction would be rage and anger uh, and heartbreak. Everything. Um, mixture of everything, you know. And then... I never heard a passion so confused, so strange, outrageous, outrageous means excessive, you know, so much of emotion, you know, exploded out of Shylock on hearing that news and not just that news because Jessica, definitely Jessica did elope with the with uh and that too with a christian but along with her she had also taken ducats bags of gold ducats and jewelries in fact she had robbed her own father the father who is a money lender who is also a miser who is also greedy that we should know so he was extremely extremely excessively angry and so variable was his uh, mood that he uh, showed now so variable means changing in mood so changing in mood means probably he was sad he showed his anxiousness his uh, anger his rage his frustration everything you know so it was a mixture of all various emotions and mood that he uh, 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 it was an outburst of uh, 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 different various uh, different kinds of mood as the dog Jew did utter the street and yet this man the Selenio he seems to be quite mean for he refers to the Jew as a dog as the dog Jew did utter in the street my daughter oh my ducats oh my daughter fled with a Christian oh my Christian ducats justice the law my ducats and my daughter a sealed bag two sealed bags of ducats of double ducats stolen from me by my daughter and jewels two stones two rich and precious stones stolen by my daughter justice find the girl she had the stones upon me and the ducats so this was the kind of so out here uh selenio he uh, you know he ex uh, you know he is trying to ex in a very exaggerated ma exaggerated manner he's trying to parody the emotion the outburst of emotion that had uh, that he had witnessed uh, that he had witnessed of uh, Shylock, 
you know that he had seen uh, a Shylock showing such kind of outburst of emotion and he exaggerates the parody of Shylock's greedy behavior out here that is what he does and he imitates and he mimics and he uh, he repeats whatever he had heard he uh, says that you know in fact in a very mocking way you know criticizing way and a very uh, full of excitement so then then what happens and out here what we see is that you know uh, he Shylock he cries and uh, there is this so many variation of mood that he exhibits that we get to know through the mouth of Selenio you know and Shylock cries as if you know Shylock cries as if he is completely confused confused between the loss of his daughter and his money. All right, so he's completely confused, you know. That's why he's saying some. Uh, he's uh, talking senseless. My Christian, oh my Christian ducats fled with a Christian. He says, oh my Christian ducats, justice, law, my ducats and my daughter. So here, this is exactly what we see. He is in a complete state of confusion. Whether, uh, as in, uh, you know, whether he is sad, uh, uh, confused, whether he is sad about the loss of his daughter, or whether the uh, whether he is sad about the loss of his money that is what we see then Celerino why all the boys in Venice follow him crying his stones his daughters and his ducats and so now out here we also get to see the kind of treatment that uh, the Jews normally they face uh, in the society where uh, where it was uh, dominated by the Christians and how the Christians they looked down upon the Jews so much so that even the even little children of Venice the Christian children they looked down upon uh, the Jews and this is one perfect example that shows that where the small little boys of Venice they were running after him as Shylock was shouting all these in frenzy you know in uh, in a in a changing various uh, outburst of various emotion as he was crying in frenzy and running towards the Duke you know he was simultaneously being followed by the little children of Venice and they were shouting crying in crying out like Shylock saying his stones his daughter and his ducats so it seems that they were enjoying you know rather than empathizing and sympathizing and having pity upon Shylock then Selenio says uh, let good Antonio look he keep his day or he shall pay for this so now this you know this after they discuss about the situation of and uh, of Shylock it all of a sudden brings them in a very serious mood for a uh, serious mood in fact a serious concern that arises in their mind and that curse uh, cur uh, sorry that uh, concern is pertaining to the safety of Antonio for they feel that you know if Antonio does not pay his money pay the loan that he had taken from loan from Shylock if he does not pay it on time then definitely he will not he will land up he will land himself up into great grave trouble so that is what we see out here then uh, so here Selenio he shows concern for uh, Antonio's fate that is exactly what we see then Celerino says Mary uh, Mary Mary well remembered I uh, I reasoned Mary well remembered yes you remind me of something I reasoned I reasoned means I had a talk with a French man yesterday who told me in the narrow seas so the narrow seas out here underline my dear children the narrow seas out here refers to Goodwin channel so there was uh, there is this history of a uh, goodwin channel that is also known as the english channel which happens to be very very perilous you know life taking very dangerous which people often feared for many a times and often uh, you know pe uh, the sailors they never uh, they never could cross this goodwin channel safely you know there was only there were uh, it was a rare case where a ship would could safely pass through Goodwin Channel. So he is this narrow seas is referred to Goodwin that Goodwin Channel that is also known as the English Channel. 
who told me in the narrow seas that part of the French and the English there miscarried. Miscarried means wrecked a vessel of our country richly fraught. So he received a news from the French man uh, the previous day that a Venetian ship was seen uh, in the English Channel that was richly loaded and it was it had been wrecked out there but, and that ship was completely richly loaded and that ship belonged to Venice. I thought and the minute I heard this from the Frenchman, I thought upon Antonio when he told me and wished in silence that it were not his. So the minute he told me this, uh, brought me this news, gave me this news, immediately, instantaneously, the first person that came in my mind was Antonio and I am so worried about him and I and God forbid may that ship not be Antonio's and I wished in silence that it was not his ship. Then so out here uh, you know uh, what we uh, this uh, Celerino he uh, provides the audience also a very discouraging news that is relayed which talks which is related which is in fact a rumor so which is a rumor of which they are not quite certain about too, but yet they are in great doubt that it could possibly be Antonio's ship because they are uh, as per the news that they heard, you know, it was a Venetian ship that was richly loaded and obviously Antonio's ship, Antonio being a rich servant, his ships were richly, always richly loaded. Then see what happens. Uh, Selenio. You were best to tell Antonio that you hear yet do not suddenly for it may grieve him. So you better inform Seller, uh, Antonio about it. But yet not immediately, not right now, not exactly right now. For if you immediately give him this news, it might sadden him even more. Why? Because he's already sad. And why is he sad? Why is Antonio already sad? We shall see now. Celerino says... A kinder gentleman trades not on the or uh, no, not sorry trades not the earth. So so here he expresses here he expresses uh, his liking. In fact, they express their liking for Antonio, and he refers to uh, Antonio as a man who is so kind that there is no other kind person like Antonio who walks on this earth i saw bassanio and antonio part bassanio told him he would make some speed of his return and bassanio as and so he's talking about the scene where he had witnessed where antonio and bassanio they were departing from each other bassanio who was about to set sail to belmont and antonio who was about to be left behind in venice so this departure you know he uh, he's talking about this uh, departing scene where Bassanio told Antonio that he will, as soon as he accomplishes his objective, uh, uh, objective that with which he, uh, uh, objective that he takes to Belmont to achieve, you know, as soon as he finishes that and he's, he's done with, he will immediately return to Antonio, he said, uh, then of his return and he answered and Antonio answered, do, uh, do not so slubber, do not so slubber, slubber means spoil, do not spoil not business for my sake, do not spoil your business, the business for which you are leaving or going to Belmont, do not spoil that intention of yours, objective and aim of yours just for my sake. Bassanio, but stay with the very riping of the time, but I in fact Instead of hurrying back to me, I want you to stay there till you attain your object. And for the Jews bond which he had of me and with regard to the Jews bond which I have signed, you know, let it not enter in your mind of love. Let it not disturb you, you know, let it not distract you in, uh, in your process of trying to court Portia, fair Portia. Be merry, be happy. Don't take tension. You know, don't, uh, don't worry about it. I will handle it. That is what exactly he's trying to say. And employ your chiefest thought. Employ your best thought. You know, try your every ways, best ways and means to court Portia, to courtship and such fair Austins. Austins means display of affection of love and show your best display of affection of love to Portia. 
as shall conveniently become you there and even there, his eyes being big with tears. So, and as he said this, as Antonio, although Antonio was asking Bassanio not to uh, hurry back to him, not to hurry back to Venice, but in fact to take his own sweet time and, ta and try his best ways and means and all the best measures to court Portia and win her, you know, although he says that and vices Bassanio, but yet it seems that he, that's, uh, it seems that he was still sad at the departure of Bassanio. So, and for it could be clearly seen in his eyes, his eyes being big with tears, Antonio's eyes were big with tears, turning his face, he put his hand behind him and he turned and he could not, tears welled out of his eyes and he did not want to show his emotions to Bassanio who was about to leave for uh, Belmont. So, he immediately turned his back against Bassanio so that he would not see his tears. Turning his face, he put his hand behind him and with affection, wondrous sensible, he wrung Bassanio's hand and he wrung, he left Bassanio's hand and so they parted. So here, uh, what we see is uh, Celerino, he conveys uh, the intensity of Antonio's love for Bassanio, which is either romantic or platonic. You know, and uh, uh, critics uh, critics have been debating about the kind of affection that Antonio carried for uh, Bassanio, whether it was actually a romantic, uh, where a man who has fallen in love with another man, or whether it is a platonic love, where it is a love between two best friends. You know, so that's there. Then Selenio says, I think he only loves the world for him. So he makes speculation, Selenio, he makes speculation that probably Antonio may, uh, Antonio loves this world only for, only for, uh, for uh, Bassanio. I pray thee, let us go and find him out. I pray, uh, let us quickly go and find Antonio and quicken and quicken means and cheer up and cheer him up. You know, cheer him, cheer his uh, sad and grieving mood, his embraced uh, heaviness, his embraced heaviness is, uh, and to cheer up his heavy spirit, sad spirit with some some delight or the other, with some pleasant diversion of diversion or other, something very cheerful. Let us try to uh, bring up his spirit, cheer up his spirit. Then Salerino says, do we so? Yes, let us do so. So, and then they move towards uh, towards uh, uh, Antonio and they start so seeking for Antonio. So out here what we see is these two minor characters as I already told you they have discussed about what uh, ha uh, 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 what has taken place and that incident w uh, that has taken place has actually not uh, been shown on the stage but through them we come to know that these were the things that had taken place and then what the other important thing that happens out here, develops out here is, you know, after hearing the kind of reaction and outburst of Shylock uh, that we uh, hear from Celerino and Selenio, you know, this incident actually, uh, what happens is this incident triggers the, uh, triggers and in, in fact more than triggers, it blinds the money lender to such an extent that he is not able to define the two difference between monetary value and human value why because previously what we see is in act one scene three what we see is the kind of hatred that shylock carries against antonio is that of religion and in terms of commercial aspect but now out here after this incident, after we hear of this incident, especially the incident of the elopement of Jessica, that too with a Christian who, who happens to be the friend of Antonio, it uh, builds up another hatred and this time it is at a very, very personal level which, you know, which uh, deepens his grudge against Antonio and furthers his, uh, furthers his, uh, you know, a desire to take revenge upon him it furthers him to such an extent where eventually he 
gets completely blinded and he is not able to see the difference between the true difference between the value or monetary value and human value. So thank you very much. With this we end Act 2, 